Welcome back to the Infinity Travel AZ Studios. We have Kevin with us again from African Travel. He's going to talk to us today about Botswana and Namibia. How are you today, Kevin? I am absolutely fantastic, Cindy, and it's just such a pleasure to be with you again. I love bringing the joys and the, the lights of Africa to, to your clients. It's great. I do too. So take it away. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And as I said, what an absolute pleasure to be here with everybody again. You know, we really love working with Cindy and it's just such a great, we really, as I've said before, we're such great believers in what your travel advisor and what Cindy brings to the table for you when we're planning these trips, particularly something that is quite exotic like this, because Cindy, Cindy knows you and she knows how to, you know, how you like to travel and so on. So it's just so important to get it right. These are really important trips. It's not something we're necessarily going to go back to over and over again. So we really want to make sure that this is a life-changing experience um, and that we get it right for the very, you know, the first time out and make sure everything is absolutely perfect. So Cindy is just a wizard that that's what she does. And as I always like to say, Cindy knows you, you know, she knows all of your likes and dislikes, how you like to travel. We know these countries inside out and always round. So we come together and create the, the absolute perfect marriage to create the ultimate in life changing experience for you when you travel to Africa. So Cindy, today I'm very, very excited. We're going to, to have a look at two countries um, that uh, are lesser visited and yet nonetheless are absolutely amazing, simply incredible. But before we do that, I always just remind all of your listeners that at African Travel, our moniker is We Know Africa, purely and simply because it is true. We've been around the block a lot, 45 years as African Travel in the business, and um, it is... Uh, Everybody that works for the company, either born in Africa, I myself born in Zambia, which is in central southern Africa, actually very close to where we're going today. Um, and uh, or they've uh, lived in Africa, or at the very least traveled extensively in Africa. And you know, back to what I said earlier, that just really makes sure that we know all the ins and outs, all the nuances to absolutely uh, be certain that your clients are going to have the very, very best possible trip to Africa when they travel there. Uh, because that's what it's all about. So today we're going to start off by taking a look at Namibia. So Namibia is just one of my favorite countries in all of Africa, and yet it remains one of the most unvisited or undiscovered. Uh, only 5% of travelers who go to Africa ever actually go to Namibia. And I think once we look at it, we're going to see that everybody should be going there because it truly is remarkable and absolutely amazing. So in case anybody's not sure where it is, let's put it on the map. So we've got the map of Africa here down on the bottom in the southwest part of the continent where the blue arrow is, we're looking at Namibia. And there are several regions of Namibia that are worth visiting while you're in the country. So uh, I, Windhoek is, as you sort of see in the center of the map, there is the capital city. It's kind of where most people start. Um, and then Sosuvle, Skeleton Coast, Itoshilan, and uh, we'll also take a look at a, a couple of other areas while we are at this. But the big thing about Namibia is this is the desert. This is the Kalahari Desert. It is spectacular. These dunes that are hundreds and hundreds of feet high are just so amazing. Um, it really is a remarkable landscape. And yet the biggest surprise for everybody is the abundance of wildlife that is living in these desert conditions. You know, Cindy, I think everybody thinks desert, they think maybe a scorpion, potentially some other sort of lizard or reptile, and that's about it. Nothing could be further from the truth. You are absolutely getting the elephants and the giraffes and the zebra, oh my, and oh gosh, whatever else, and the uh, lions and uh, cheetahs, everything lives here in, uh, in Namibia. So it really is truly, truly remarkable. And up in the northern part of the area is one of the most prolific areas for wildlife. This is Etosha, very, very famous for its population of elephants, but also, as you can see here, the ibex. This is a very rare animal to find anywhere in the planet. A lot of people believe that this is actually the inspiration for the unicorn and uh, where the, the, the uh, uh, unicorn, the idea of unicorns came from these ibex, um, but very few places in Africa that you can see them. But in Namibia, they are quite prolific. And as I said, certainly an incredible array of animals in the desert here. Rhinos having adapted to live in these incredibly harsh conditions. It is such a surprise to everybody. It truly is remarkable. And then we have the Skeleton Coast. So the Skeleton Coast is called such because 
it, uh, in Namibia was, of course, in the, you know, 200, uh, 250 years ago, when the sailing ships used to travel from Europe, particularly the UK, all the way around the southern coast, it was the Suez Canal in those days, around the southern coast of Africa, to go to India and the Far East. Um, they would hug the coast very, very closely for, nav for ease of navigation and so on. Uh, but the winds and the currents in this part of Africa and the southwest coast of Africa here are very strong. And a lot of ships came uh, in, uh, got into trouble in this area. So there are dozens and dozens and dozens of shipwrecks here. And therefore, they call it the Skeleton Coast. Uh, but it is truly very, it's really, really beautiful. And um, it is just absolutely amazing because the lions have adapted to living on the beach here in the Skeleton Coast and they hunt seals. So, you know, you, lions hunting seals is just something one never, ever thinks about, but that's what they do to, to survive in this area. Um, and there is a very, very big population of seals, but it is very rugged. It's just very out there, uh, very exposed and a very beautiful part of Africa. And then this is Sosuvle. So Sosuvle is in the central part of Namibia, um, uh, about halfway up the country. And again, this amazing sand, you know, it's, and the colors in Namibia are always spectacular. It's all these golden colors and some reds and, and, and just incredible, absolutely amazing. And yet here we also have the Bushmen of the Kalahari. So this is the Kalahari Desert. And it's fascinating to meet them and learn how they've adapted to living in these incredible conditions and uh, the things they do to, to, to uh, save water, to find water, um, and, uh, and to continue, uh, you know, and to, to make this life, they're, they're part of where they live. The other tribe that live here are the Himba people, and we love always uh, for anybody who travels to Namibia to meet both the Bushmen and the Himba people. Uh, Himba people are, really have an incredible way where they make all these lotions and potions from the sand and the water that they do find in Namibia, and it is natural, um, age uh, pr preservation. I always like to say this woman is probably 110 years old or something, but uh, it's just, it's really incredible how they keep their skin from burning in the searing heat in the sun um, and how they survive. And, uh, and they have the most beautiful, beautiful soft skins. It's absolutely incredible. And then of course, to do sundowners, you know, no trip to Africa would be complete without sundowners. So in Namibia, we absolutely do them in style as always with these incredible setting suns. It is just so beautiful. And the lodges, as I've mentioned to you before, at African Travel, we do everything at that four and five star level. So even though we're in these really interesting and, and it's really quite difficult conditions for life to exist, uh, you are going to be very, very comfortable while you are there. Um, so this is Kwesi Dunes. It is one of the lodges that we uh, that we do use in this area. As and this is Honeb Valley Camp. So again, really, you're not going to give up any of the creature comforts of home by visiting Namibia. Uh, you know, after a day out, seeing the animals, meeting the bushmen, uh, you are going to come back to absolute comfort and luxury and be very, very comfortable indeed. And this is one of my favorite, favorite places in all of Africa. So, you know, absolutely, we've said we do everything at four and five star level, but within those parameters, when we can find something that's just that little bit different, we love that. And I think this falls right into them. So this is Shipwreck Lodge. It is right on Skeleton Coast, high on those dunes, looking down the sand dunes out to the coast and out to the Atlantic Ocean. And it is just so, so beautiful. The attention to detail here is really, really extraordinary. And uh, they just have such a great setting. It's very, very comfortable indeed. Another way to see Namibia is actually by train. So many people may have heard of Rovis Rail. Rovis Rail is one of the best train journeys or one of the best train companies in all of the world. They have a very, very luxurious product indeed. And they have a trip, they do various itineraries throughout all parts of Africa, but they have a trip that starts in South Africa and it goes um, from Pretoria all the way up through Namibia. Uh, it enters Namibia at the southern point and it goes all the way up to Atosha. And what I love about this journey is, so first and foremost, it gets it lets people see a bit of Western South Africa uh, that lots of people never actually get to see and yet is really quite incredible. And then it goes all the way up through, but it also spends, it spends several nights on the train traveling, but it also, we do take the, the guests off the train every now and then, and we go to some of the lodges that I've shown you, and they spend overnight there as well. So it's really the best of both worlds. 
But for anybody who loves trains or anybody that likes a little bit of discovery and fun and something really different in the absolute lap of luxury, this is an incredible, incredible trip. And here we can see the interior of the trains. Um, by day, they have these wonderful lounges when the train is journeying along by night, very comfortable. Every cabin has its own ensuite facility. Um, so this is really, really a remarkable, remarkable trip indeed, and absolutely beautiful. But Cindy, you know, I can't emphasize enough what an amazing feast for the senses Namibia is. These colors are spectacular, absolutely stunningly beautiful. And to come home with images like this, oh my gosh, absolutely incredible. This is truly, truly a, this is a once in a lifetime trip because there just is nowhere else like it on the planet. So moving away from Namibia, now we're gonna to go to Botswana. And uh, so Botswana and Namibia actually share a border, as you can see here. So Botswana down in the central part of Southern Africa. And Botswana is another country where I think it's really important for people to travel around. They will see different parts of the country. And each of them is just that little bit un more unusual to the other or a little different to the other. The entry points for Botswana are either through the capital city of Maun, M-A-U-N that we see there, or through Victoria Falls. Um, so the Victoria Falls International Airport is actually in Zimbabwe, and it is only about a 90 minute drive from there to the border with Botswana. And then we we'll go right into Chobe National Park. So it's not, it's really interesting. And it gives the clients an opportunity to see Victoria Falls as well while they're in the area. And when we're moving around Botswana, it's going to be in these bush flights. Um, so, and actually it's the same in Namibia. Uh, you either do the train or you will move around by bush flight uh, like this if you're going to spend several days in each place. It's very much the way to do it. So why do I love Botswana? Because Cindy, trust me, I love Botswana. This is an amazing, amazing destination. So for anybody that's just looking to escape, it's so beautiful, it's so peaceful, it's got a feeling of isolation to it. So if you just are over everything we've been through for the last year and a few months and just want to escape, Botswana is the perfect place, place to do that. It's also very, very romantic. Um, it's just, it offers untold opportunities to connect with each other um, and just really have a, a, an amazing, again, that escapism and water. This is home to the Okavanga Delta, the largest inland delta in the world. And therefore in many parts of Botswana, there is water, water everywhere. And the animals have adapted to living in, on, around the water. So I always think it's really interesting that we've got Namibia right next door that is pure desert and the animals are living in the desert. And here, just across the border, we're into the Okavanga Delta and all this water everywhere. But having said that, I'm now gonna show, because you can say, well, Kevin, there's no water here, obviously, but this is Chobe up in the northern part of the country. Um, and the Chobe region is actually home to the Chobe River. So yes, there actually is a big waterway here. The Chobe River is one of Africa's most uh, important rivers. Um, and uh, it is also one of the biggest populations of elephant in all of Africa. This is in, in the Chobe National Park. Um, very, very well known for their, uh, for their anti-poaching, for their conservation of elephants, and really a world uh, uh, leader when it comes to elephant and elephant populations. And very close to Chobe and also in the northern part of, uh, of Botswana, we've got Salinda. And Salinda, home to big cats, particularly leopards. They have a very robust leopard population here. So if you ever have anybody or if any of you are ever looking to go and what, really want to make sure you see leopards, because leopards are, of course, the most elusive of all the animals in Africa, of, certainly of all the wild cats. Um, so uh, you can find them usually at very good chances of leopard sightings here in Salinda. But not only leopards, and there are everything else is there as well, because obviously for leopards to thrive, they just have to be a whole lot of other animals, um, because that's what that's how leopards survive. But there are some unusual animals that you can find in this part of Botswana as well. So up in the top left, we've got the painted dog or painted wolf, as they're being called. And I love that because it does look as though this dog just ran through all sorts of fresh paint, or that somebody just took pots of paint and just splattered it everywhere. It's very abstract looking. Uh, down below, it, we've got a roan antelope found in very few places and probably one of Africa's really kind of sad stories now, um, but still can be seen in Botswana on the right hand side. This is a sable antelope. And, you know, Cindy, when I was a child growing up in, in, in Zambia, there were sable antelopes everywhere. We saw multitudes of them. And now they are one of the 
most critically endangered animals in Africa. There's very few of them left. They've really almost been hunted to extinction, primarily, of course, for their coat. Um, and as we know, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, to have a sable coat was a very in thing for people and for the elite. Um, so as a result of that, now, unfortunately, not a lot of them left, but you still can see them in this part of Botswana. And with those curved horns, they are truly, truly magnificent. In the central part of Botswana, we've got the Makati Kati Plains, and these are a salt flat. Um, and I show this because, hey, when you're on safari, you should be having some fun and getting creative with those photographs, right? Um, but you can go uh, dune buggying here and ATVs and all sorts of fun things. It is very, very flat indeed. And it's really cool. But that does not mean that there are no animals here. Amazingly, even in these very dry conditions in the Kadi Kadi area, we've got in the top, we've got the brown hyena, which if you're familiar with hyenas, this looks very different to regular hyenas. We've got, of course, the ibex again that we saw in Namibia. So Botswana and Namibia are about the only places we can find them. Down on the bottom, we've got a bat-eared fox. So very, very few places. They're almost extinct, but they are here in Botswana. And I'm going to move over to bottom right, and that's the Kalahari lion. And they look quite different to regular lions as well, um, with that almost vest that they, they wear uh, below their manes. But in the middle is Africa's most elusive creature of all. This is a honey badger. Um, and uh, he is, I know people who've been rangers for 40 years and never seen a honey badger. And I happen to know some people that actually went to Africa on safari and saw three in one week. So it's very difficult to tell. But this is if you if there's an animal in Africa that you're not going to see, this is probably it. But it also happens to be the meanest critter in all of Africa. Even the lions are running away from this guy. Um, he is really, really a mean guy. I did already mention, of course, the Okavanga Delta. Um, you know, there's always water in the Delta. Now, at some part times of the year, uh, because this water comes down from Zambia and Angola. So if the rains have been very prolific up there, it will mean that once we get into the May through October period, this delta is just going to be absolutely filled with water and all the wildlife in it. Um, but the, at other times of year, it, the delta does shrink a little bit, but there is water in it at all times of the year, and therefore wildlife is always easily seen. And one of the great things about going to Africa is, you know, one of the animals that we all know belongs in Africa, but we don't talk about so much, are hippopotami. Um, so to see hippos is actually not that easy. It's, you know, a lot of people, I think, every time they go to Africa, they think, well, every river that we come to or every pond or lake is going to have hippos in it. Not always, and even if they're there, you can't always see them or find them. But in the Okavanga Delta, they are there are lots and lots of them, and they're in every waterway that you're going to come across. And what better way to get around and do some game viewing than by dugout canoe, or as we call them in Botswana, Makoros. Um, so you only find these Botswana, Zambia, uh, that's about the only place where you'll find them. So it's a great way to get out of the Jeep, get onto the water and see the animals the way the animals are living. And because, as I say, they have adapted to and to find elephants, you know, just wading through water, living in the water like this is truly, truly remarkable. And here we also have the Bushmen again. So the same as that we have them in Namibia. So these are the Bushmen of the Kalahari and the Kalahari does extend into Botswana. Um, so they are a very ancient tribe and really, truly no visit to this part of Africa would be complete without meeting them and learning about their traditions and customs. And they have a fascinating language. Um, that they speak. So it's really a cool thing uh, to, because it's all done with rather than, I understand language for all of those really sounds, but the way they do it, they use their tongue and they click around and do all sorts of fun things. It's really remarkable to, to, uh, to, to listen to them. Another fun thing to be able to do in this part of Africa are meerkats. So many people have seen meerkat manna. These are wonderful animals with amazing characters. Uh, you know, they live on these very, very flat plains. So even a few inches of elevation is really a treat for them. So uh, to come and lie down next to the burrows uh, and maybe within you know, 15, 20 minutes of lying there quite still, they will come out. They are not afraid of you. And uh, they will to, just to go up onto your knee or onto your waist. And sometimes they'll even go and climb up onto your head. For them, this is seeing miles around that they normally would never be able to see. And they absolutely love it. So it can be a really fun, a fun thing to do with the animals in, in this part of Botswana. 
And as I said, you know, Botswana is all about that total relaxation. Cindy, I know you just want to be there right now, just lying out there with that beautiful plunge pool and uh, listening to the sounds of Africa as you get this an, an incredible massage. And I've talked about sundown as well. Boy, this is probably my favorite way to have sundown is to come in a Makoro and uh, they put the, the, the bar out in the water here um, and you get up there and you're going to have a have your gin and tonic while you pull back around through the reeds and the marshes and seeing the elephants. Wow, this is ultimate in sundown as far as I can see. And then after sundown is, of course, dining. And we've talked so often about how the food all over Africa is so wonderful and how people are really blown away by that. It is a big surprise for them. But to dine in these, you know, this kind of setting and share stories about what you've seen today and the amazing animals that you've seen having a wonderful dinner. And as you can see, they really do it up. There's tablecloths and crystalware and silverware, but you don't have to. What you wore for safari during the day is perfectly fine to go to dinner in at nighttime. So all the tiaras and the ball gowns and so on stay back at home. Um, a couple of lodges that I love in Botswana. There are many, 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 but I just want to feature a couple today. Jack's Camp, this has just been completely renovated. And I feel it's just like such a throwback in time. Uh, it really is cool. And this is the Rafa. So Cindy, I see you in that copper tub with a glass of champagne in your hand and <laughs> just totally relaxed, looking out that picture window and the elephants are walking by. What a magnificent way to relax and just take in the sights and sounds of Africa. And this one, I would be very amiss if we didn't talk about. This is Kijara. So this is Africa. Uh, this is Botswana, its newest lodge. It just opened on December 1st. It is absolutely amazing. It is part of the Red Car Nation collection. Um, if anybody's familiar, they have hotels all over London. They have Ashford Castle in, in Ireland, one of the best hotels in the world. They have a couple of hotels in Cape Town and Durban in South Africa. So this is their first foray into the uh, lodge uh, space, and it is remarkable. And again, you know, they only have 12 tents. Uh, we're all at that ultimate in luxury. Sitting out on the, the terrace of your tent, again, with your gin and tonics and to steal those animals. And this is an everyday thing. It's just normal that the animals are all just hanging out on, on the plains like that in front. They also here have a very great wildcat population, particularly leopards. Leopards are almost a guaranteed sighting here. But this is another place with the attention to detail. And uh, my gosh, I think we could we should do a test of bathtubs all over Africa. <laughs> it's like here's another one that we want to be in. <laughs> it's like absolutely amazing. Uh, just simply incredible. But a feature they have in this is the uh, the baobab suite. So it's made to look like a baobab tree, which are native to Africa. Um, and it's got four levels. So you go in on the ground level. There is a, you know sort of a living or a bathroom area and so on. Then up on the next level, there is the living area. Third level is the uh, regular indoor bedroom. And on the top level is what we call a star bed. So star beds are where you sleep out under the African sky, a million points of light shining down upon you. You know, we all live under the same sky, Cindy, but so often so many people don't get to see it so well uh, because of light pollution, air pollution, and so on. But when you do, oh, the stars are magnificent. And what better way to do it than to sleep out under that sky in, the, in a, a four-poster bed um, very safe indeed and just simply amazing. So we do have an itinerary called Platinum Botswana that does happen to roll all of this into one itinerary. Uh, because that African travel, we are very absolutely, uh, you know, we customize everything. Uh, we want everybody to travel the way they want to, this, at the pace they want to. So if you decide that you would like to spend four nights at Kijara, this is not etched in stone, it's just an idea, but it, this is a great itinerary. It just happens to give the very best of Botswana that we've talked about today. Because, you know, Botswana is all about the wow. Africa is all about the wow. Those wow moments when you travel to Africa are absolutely going to be there. Um, but I always say, if you come home with images like this, oh my gosh, you're going to be the talk of the cocktail parties and dinner parties for days, weeks, and months to come for everybody that you know, because it's simply amazing. And as always, you know, we know how to work to, we've got contracts with all of the major airlines on how to get to these places. We know when to go, when are the best seasons. But, you know, as I always say, a lot of people stay away or shy away from rainy season, but rainy season in Africa can be amazing. First and foremost, incredible value. But secondly, to sit on those balconies with some of those uh, lodges and camps that we've seen and watch the lightning bouncing, bouncing around and the rain coming down and the animals rejoicing, it's just absolutely incredible. So don't shy away from rainy season. Uh, it might be a little muddy, but you're in these high jeeps. So that just, to me, adds to part of the fun. 
Um, but SN, people look at, you know, anybody's looking for the popular seasons, the dry seasons, we know all about that. And we can answer all of those questions, of course, on, you know, do I need a visa? Do I need any shots? Do I need to take malaria prevention? And so on. We've got answers to all of those. And if anybody, you know, is looking to travel as part of a group, you've got, uh, you know, eight or nine friends. For us at African Travel, a group starts at 10. So, you know, five couples who all are friendly together, get together and have dinner every week or every month or something. Why not get together and have that dinner under the stars in Africa? We can absolutely make it happen. Or if it's a special occasion, a 50th wedding anniversary, a uh, you know, a 60th birthday, 40th birthday, or just because, let's say, or, or a multi-generational family, why not? Because everything we're going to do, of course, is going to talk to sustainability. Um, we've talked a little bit about the conservation of animals throughout Africa over the, uh, the last three sessions, and that's absolutely what we're all about at African Travel. So with that, I just remains to say thank you so, so much. And of course, I know that Cindy now cannot wait to get you guys to Botswana and Namibia or any of the other places that we've looked at in the past week. So, but with that, Cindy, I'm going to throw it back to you and uh, I thank you very much. Wow, <clears throat> that was amazing as always, Kevin. It just the, the photos of Namibia, it's unbelievable. It, you would think there would be filters on those pictures and I'm sure there were, were no filters. They really aren't. Those colors are just remarkable. As I said, I, I love that turn of phrase, feast for the senses, because that's what it is. It really is remarkable. It, it's, it's absolutely incredible. So yes, every time we do this, I just, I am dying <laughs> to go to Africa. So one of these days, one of these absolutely. days. So. I, I, we, we, and like I said, I think we should create a trip to do the, the, the bathtubs the bath of Africa. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I can't, I can't imagine just kicking back with a glass of wine or champagne. Just, yeah, that, that Absolutely. would be incredible. Absolutely. It's, got your, it's got your name written all over it, Cindy. <laughs> I'm thinking you're right. I'm thinking you're right. So thank you again for taking time to hang out with me for a half hour or so i i appreciate it as always and um hopefully we can do another one soon sounds great thank you okay have a great day thank you bye